when you are performing subjective refraction you should do it monocularly first and then together we do it binocularly so binocularly when we do at the last stage we do the binocular balancing so let's come to the mono steps of monocular subjective refraction so first we do the we determine the cylindrical correction under fog second step is refining the cylindrical correction without fog third step is determining the spherical end point and the fourth step is determining the binocular balance when your both eyes monocular subjective refraction will be completed so at last we do the binocular balancing so these are these we do in cases where there is astigmatism is present if there is no astigmatism there is no problem we can just do fogging and slowly slowly we can defog and get the value right but if astigmatism is present we need to determine the cylinder correction under the fog first so how do you determine the cylinder under fog we will so starting stage what we have discussed earlier we keep that working distance lens right so you are doing doing the monocular subjective refraction so you are covering the left eye for the right eye you are doing the subjective refraction right so slowly slowly you have now uh, while doing your retinoscope you have placed that working distance lens plus 1.5 diopter and slowly slowly you reduce that in plus 0.25 steps so to determine the cylinder under fog you will reduce in 0.25 steps up to which till 2040 or 20 partial 2030 partial that means when the patient reach 6 by 12 or 69 partial he will stop defogging he will not defog further why because we believe that the entire storm sconoid is in front of the retina that means we have made the eye artificially myopic right that means the horizontal meridian and the vertical meridian both are entire storm sconoid is in front of the retina so how can we do uh, how can we determine the cylinder under fog see there is clock dial chart is there you can do it with the help of rotating t you can do it with the radial line chart so these charts basically give you an estimation of the astigmatism not exact astigmatism you will get it will give an estimation of the basically the astigmatic axis it will give an estimation of that so let me discuss about clock dial this is a, a clock dial chart you can see there are 12 uh, radial lines okay each uh, it looks like basically a wall clock or uh, like that you can see there are 12 lines 1 2 3 4 5 6 12 11 10 11 12 12 okay so here each line is consisting of three lines so one middle one and two outer ones now this is called clock dial because it resembles a clock now this chart okay so this chart basically will place it in front of the patient okay so when the patient reads 612 or 6 by 9 partial so you place this chart in front of the patient and ask that which of the radial lines seems to be clearer to his eyes suppose the patient reports that this 2 and 8 you can see you have to mark the clock dial chart 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay this is a 6 o'clock position this is a 12 o'clock position this is a 2 o'clock position 3 o'clock like this right so suppose a patient reports this 2 and 8 these two this line is more clearer than the rest of the lines okay let's consider is at a single line okay now this 2 and 8 if the patient considers to be it is more clearer he will what he will do will multiply 30 with the lowest number that is 2 and 8 2 is the lowest one so 2 into 30 that means 
axis is 60 degree. So, the axis of astigmatism is 60 degree. Same way if the patient tells that the 3 and 9 o'clock position is better. Okay, so 3 is the slowest one, 3 into 30, 90 degree is the axis or cylinder. Okay, this way you can determine the cylinder under fog. Okay, just this is an estimation, this is not the final countdown. Same way you can do the rotating T chart where the patient finds which of the lines the patient finds clearer, which axis. Basically, it gives us an estimation of the cylindrical axis. That's it right or whether the patient is having any cylindrical power or not see if the patient is having spherical component only the patient will see all the lines to be blurred right either all the lines to be blurred or all the lines to be clear right but if the patient is having a cylindrical component so he can make out that at least one of these lines one of them are clear right so that is a trick you can also find out whether cylindrical component is present or not by straddling technique okay you will so straddling technique can be done objectively only while doing your retinoscopy okay so this is uh, estimation of the determination of cylinder under fog now let's come to the determining the or the refining the cylinder without fog we all know jackson cross cylinder jackson cross cylinder is the best way to refine the cylinder without fog so jackson cross cylinder i have also discussed in uh, my other videos you can find in the, my playlist also you can find it out how to refine how to find out the axis refine the axis and power with the help of jackson cross cylinder just i will just discuss a very little thing so first we refine the axis find out the axis of the cylinder with the help of jcc and then only we can find out the power with the help of jcc so it is a combination of plus and minus lenses it you can get it in 0.25 or 0.5 jcc 0.5 jcc is better okay first you find out the axis of the cylinder okay and then you can find out the power of the cylinder with the help of JCC. I am not discussing it in details because already I have discussed in the JCC section. You can find it out in other playlist. It is there. So this is the way you can determine the you are slowly coming to the end of your subjective refraction. Okay. So once the cylindrical component is refined, first you find out the axis, then the power. Then you find out the determine the spherical endpoint spherical endpoint determining again what we prefer is the least minus and more plus so you should fog the patient in such a way you give a more plus correction and a less minus correction why because after fogging if the patient can read with that okay so what is he doing basically he is relaxing his accommodation okay now after you uh, finish refine the cylinder and axis and all so you can determine the spherical endpoint you can do the diochrome test to find out okay and diochrome test you can do it uniocularly and then you can do it binocularly so there is binocular balancing basically i'll discuss it in the other video next video so binocular balancing is a end point basically of your subjective refraction so that is also very very important so once you come down to all the steps okay you start with that fogging slowly defog find out the cylinder axis and power refine it and then you come to the spherical end point okay you do the diochrome test and then you come to the binocular balancing part the subjective refraction is not so difficult but yes these steps if you follow you will never go wrong with your subjective refraction thank you